Okay, let's start by depressurizing the fuel line. And you do that by going to your fuse box and remove the fuse, the relay that disconnects your fuel pump. Uh, that way when you remove any lines from the fuel, um, it won't be coming out and gushing out. So in my car, it's number 27 and 27 is around here and it's a 15 amp fuse. Take that out and then um, you depressurize your car, your, your fuel line by turning the car on and let it run until it stops. Then try turning it on back again and do that a couple of times, two, three times until the car just does not run. And that way um, you're depressurizing the fuel line. Then we're gonna remove the negative terminal from the battery. Um, that's the only suggestion that the repair manual says to remove. Remove the cap uh, from your coolant tank. So that way um, you'll depressurize the line. And when we start taking apart the hoses um, over the throttle body, it won't leak out as much. Next, we're going to remove the filter housing and the air intake duct um, so we can separate it from the throttle body. And then we're going to remove this here. There's a lever. You pull up and then this one here there's a little tab I don't know if I can get the camera in there right here and you just pull up on the tab and pull out and put that aside and you're going to Screw this to release. And you could just pull this part out. You also have to pull this one out. It just pulls out. There's no clips or anything in there. I know guys just pull this out one try, but I don't have that strength. When you get ready to disconnect this hose that is under the air intake duct, okay, um, be warned that you're gonna have a little bit of leakage there. I think that's the brake fluid because I found uh, a little leak underneath the car on the floor and it took me a little while to trace it to see where it was coming from. And it was coming from here um, when I disconnected this tube to disconnect the throttle body. So have some extra brake fluid available um, just in case you get some leakage here when you disconnect these hoses. Um, so that way you'll be able to replace what you lost. Then we're gonna remove the cross brace that goes to the mount amount here. And we're gonna take out these two screws. This one and these two screws. That way you'll be able to pull out the upper intake manifold um, and get to the back a lot easier. Okay, once you remove the screws, just grab it. 
could just pull it out of the car. Okay. Now we're going to remove the hoses that go to the throttle body. Um, uh, this one is the PCV hose. I think this is the coolant hose. Um, I'm not sure what this one is, but it has to come out. And this one, these I think are vacuum hoses. Um, that one has to come out and you have to unclip it from there. Um, I suggest that you label these hoses uh, so you'll know where to put them and take pictures if you don't want to label them. Take pictures anyway. Uh, that way, when you start taking them off and you, it's time to put them back on, you won't get confused as to where what goes where. Um, this is my first time doing this, so bear with me. And we'll try to get this upper intake manifold out, which is going to be a doozy. So, fun, fun, fun. You will also need to remove this connector from the throttle body. Um, and all you do is just pull this down. Here we go again. I need both hands. You're supposed to be able to pull it off. Once you disconnect the hoses on the top of the throttle body, you need to disconnect the throttle body itself. And there's four screws here. Okay, you just undo those. And uh, you should be able to pull the uh, throttle body out. And this is a good time to clean it up um, because this can cause a lot of surging if it gets dirty and mucky in there. So um, it's good to clean it. Get some throttle body cleaner uh, spray and just clean inside there and on the back side uh, before putting it back on the car. I forgot to mention, um, you have to remove this from that there. And it's, you remove it the same way. There's a little clip underneath it. You push it in and then you pull out. Um, and here's the EGR, EGR valve down here. Um, there's also a connector there for the EGR valve that needs to be removed um, right there. And uh, this is the tubing that goes all the way to the other side. It has a little clip. There are some clips that are attached to the manifold, intake manifold, that has to be taken out. That's one. And then there's one further down. It goes all the way to the back. And it's attached here. So we need to remove also this clip. This is the fuel line that is attached to the intake manifold. That needs to be separated. Otherwise, you won't be able to pull this out. I just want to show you that once you take the throttle body out, you're going to see in the back, as I was telling you, this is how dirty it gets. And I cleaned this about eight, nine months ago, not even a year. And look how dirty it is. Um, also, while you have this throttle body out, it is good to change, replace the gasket. Um, so be ready to purchase one when you, um, before you start taking this thing apart, make sure you have one gasket ready. There's also a connection. The EGR valve needs to be disconnected right there. Okay, when it came time to removing the nut from the tubing that goes to the EGR valve, um, I could not get, get it to budge. I spent 
nearly three days uh, spraying it. First with PB Blaster, nothing was happening. And then I used the um, WD-40. And I did that uh, throughout the day for almost three days. The third day I came back and I used a 27 millimeter wrench, got in there and I loosened it by hitting with a hammer and tightened it. And I loosened and tightened by hitting it with a hammer a few times. And after about half an hour of that, I finally got the nut loose. And as you can see, the motor mount is in the way. All this hoses are in the way. You have very little room to move in there. Some people remove the whole uh, battery and the box that it's in, but I did not do that because there are still things that are in the way even if I remove this. So I went in there and you have to be very patient doing this. Um, another thing I wanna mention is that you do not tighten it the way you normally would or loosen it the way you do, you know, righty tighty, loose, lefty loosey. You don't use that because the nut that goes attached to the tubing to the EGR, um, I guess it came from the bottom up. So you have to use the opposite. So in order to loosen this nut, you have to go clockwise. And to tighten it, you have to go counterclockwise. So it's the opposite. To loosen it clockwise, to tighten it counterclockwise. Um, good luck. Uh, this is just one of those things that, you know, uh, people complain about the rusted nuts and bolts on these EGRs and they are a major problem. Some people um, have had to cut the, the tubing off, um, use heat to, ten, to take it off and they use all kinds of uh, methods. So um, I was patient and fortunate enough to do it this way, waiting and um, doing it the way I did and it finally loosened up. Whew. Now back to the other stuff that I need to remove, which is the intake manifold. Okay, the next step is to remove um, the connector here. And there's a little tab that you push down and push down and pull out. Um, these go to the coils and spark plugs and it goes all the way back to the back of the intake manifold and the EGR assembly. I'm not sure if I have to disconnect those, but I'll find out soon. Um, also, the repair manual is telling me that we have to use a certain sequence uh, when removing the bolts to the manifold, intake manifold. And for my 3.0 V6 engine, I'll be using this one. Um, the sequence for mine will be, there are bolts in here. Okay. And these bolts have to be loosened and they don't come out. They stay in once you loosen them, they don't come out. So, um, we start number one, B1 is here, two here, the next sequence is three, four, then five, there's another bolt here, six, and then seven will be in here. Where are you? Right here. And this is a pain in the butt to remove. Well, it doesn't come out, but you need to loosen it. And um, I couldn't fit my uh, extensions in there because they were too thick. So I had to use a universal joint attached to the extension to be able to get that one loosened. And then that's number seven, and this is eight. And then you just pull this forward 
and lift and try to see if there's anything else that is attached to the manifold you need to disconnect um, but I won't know this is my first time I'm removing this so I won't know if there are any more uh, connectors or hoses uh, underneath alrighty so I took out all the bolts and when I went to lift it up I noticed that ladies this is heavy guys I don't know about you but it's heavy for me but when I went to lift it up it was hitting this tubing right here okay and I am not gonna mess with that um, some people suggest that you move this by removing the, these bolts and the rubber hose that goes to the back to this solenoid and then removing this also um, some other people suggested that um, just remove this and leave all this attached and just maneuver the intake manifold to the right and then up. Um, I'm gonna try not to remove this. This is this goes to the fuel line. Um, it does come out together with the intake manifold, just like the the EGL, EGR valve. It comes out together with the intake manifold. So I am going to just disconnect this and take out the holes. I think this pops up. There's like two clips here. Um, pulls out. Okay. I'm not sure about this. Okay, there should be a clip back here. And if it's like the other ones, you just push, push the clip in and pull up. Should be able to come out. And if I cannot maneuver this to the side and up, then I will disconnect this solenoid here, take out these two bolts, and take out the rubber uh, hose that goes to the back of the solenoid. And that way, this whole area will be cleared, and I'll be able to remove this. But some people don't do it. Um, they just take this out, and they just maneuver it out. All right. Okay, now that I have the intake manifold taken out of the car, uh, I am going to be replacing the ignition coils, the three at the back that was under the intake manifold. And uh, I'm not gonna do the front, I could do those later, but I will replace those three coils because one of them, um, one of the cylinder was misfiring, I think it was cylinder number three, but since I'm already in there, I'm going to go ahead and change all three of them in the back. And I will replace all six spark plugs. Um, I got all these uh, items in Amazon.com are really good prices because these coils run can run over $100 and I got a good price on those. Um, one thing I do want to mention is uh, you might want to check the gapping on this. They come pre-gap, but sometimes in shipping, these can get bent. So uh, check the gapping according to your cars making models, uh, gapping requirements, and make sure that they're all okay, not cracked or broken or uh, badly gapped. So I also got the gaskets for the intake manifold. Uh, if you're taking that out, you might as well change those gaskets. This is the gasket for the throttle body. Um, I bought this dielectric grease to put to put it in in here inside the coil. And uh, but these already came pre-greased, so I will not be using that dielectric grease. Uh, some of you already know what this is. Uh, I will be putting these on the new spark plugs and after I clean up the EGR tubes nut, I'm going to put some of this, uh, this lubricant, which is an anti-seize lubricant on those threaded parts because if you ever have to go back and take those out again, you wanna be able to take them out easily and not go through uh, the problems that I just went through with the EGR. So, um, what else? 
Oh, I also bought this, but this I didn't buy at Amazon. I bought this at Home Depot for like $12. Uh, it's a 27 millimeter wrench that you're gonna be using for that EGR nut um, that goes to, in the tubing. And I went ahead and got a, a magnetic spark plug wall socket. Um, I have one, but it's not magnetic. So I bought this one so it'll be easier to take out those spark plugs. Uh, what else? Oh, I also bought uh, a set, a socket, uh, socket set to be able to take out those nuts and bolts and stuff like that. So uh, I will leave a link and part numbers on the bottom uh, that you can use if you have a 2006 Mercury Montego. And um, it will save you a lot of money if you do this on your own. This is what it looks like without the uh, upper intake manifold. Um, I'm going to vacuum this here um, and then cover this part here with either a towel or something so no tools or debris fall in there. And when I get to the coils, um, I'm going to label them so that way when I connect them back on, I'll know which one to connect to which one. Uh, the front ones are going to be easy. And what you do is you, you take out this little uh, connector here. You pull this little tab out, pull it out, and then you have to remove this bolt. And then you grab the ignition coil and while you're pulling you're twisting to the left and the right and you pull out and um, vacuum in here also um, once before taking out the spark plugs go ahead and vacuum inside the hole so that way it won't get clogged up um, I'm gonna start on the back because if I get tired I could get those done first and then come back another time to do these because they're in the front so i'll get started okay here we have the upper intake manifold that i had already started replacing the gaskets but then i realized that there were other bolts and screws in here that i didn't have the tool for it's a um it's called the extra long torx star um bit socket and i had to order those from amazon because as you can see here, you have the eight millimeter bolts there that attach to the upper part of the engine. And then you have the star bolts right there and you have like one, two, there's, I don't know if you can see it. There it is, a three, four, and, I think that's it I'm not sure but we'll see but anyway um, I already did the bottom gaskets and now I'm going to turn this over and continue okay this is what the underside looks like and these are the new gaskets that I replaced they were easy to take out the old ones and what you do is you just clean out all the grease around it and after you clean, you just replace the gasket sear. Now, once we remove those other star bolts, whatever they're called, we should be able to take out this whole piece, this whole piece right here. And then underneath this piece, you'll have the other gaskets um, that you need to replace. So um, these gaskets. I also want to mention that um, here's your EGR valve and if you want to go ahead and clean this out and um, get it nice and shiny, uh, this is the time to do it. Uh, you might have trouble removing these bolts to get to the, to the EGR valve and disconnecting it. Uh, there are gaskets that you need to replace if you take this apart. Since I don't have the gasket for this, I forgot to order it. I am not going to attempt anything with this because if I take it apart, then I won't have the gasket. 
And like the saying goes, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. So I'll leave it. Um, also, when you're turning this over, be careful. You're going to get gasoline all over you because you had to disconnect the fuel lines from here. And also, um, when you're putting this down on the floor or wherever, uh, make sure you don't damage anything here. Um, so be very careful. Make sure you have towels and things like that. Um, as you can see, there's still gasoline in here. So I'm going to start. Oh, also, these are the fuel injectors that if you need to replace them, like I said, it's a good time to do those right now. So I'm going to go ahead, turn it again around, remove those uh, star bolts, and then remove this part and start replacing with new gaskets. Okay, there were only four screws that I took out from underneath. And when I went to lift this up, it was stuck and I thought it had more screws, but it didn't. What I did was I wedged a flathead screwdriver in here and it just got unstuck. So you have these cables here that you're gonna have to maneuver out of the way um, you might be able to disconnect this one back here if you need to. I think that one just pulls out. Um, so here's the underside. Well, it doesn't look like I need to remove any cables. Okay, so here it is. It's not as hard as I thought it was. Um, so we're going to go ahead and remove these here and clean it uh, some people use a rag and some alcohol i didn't do that because i wasn't sure if that's the right way to do it but i did clean it with a uh, you know i will clean it with a towel um, and remove a lot of the stuff that is on it and the oil and then replace it turn it back over screw it back in and this will be ready to go back into the car so it's easier than i thought when I was taking the um, intake manifold out, I noticed that um, the motor mounts were a lot worse than I thought they were. This thing came out, completely came out. It was all rotted and broken. So I, I decided that I'm gonna go ahead and attempt this myself since the mechanic I took my car to to replace the coils and uh, spark plugs was going to charge me a thousand twenty-five, so I didn't want to hear how much he was going to charge me for replacing the motor mount. Um, when I went to investigate what was my what were my options, I decided to go with this uh, bushing. Uh, the correct name is torque strut mount, and a lot of people have a lot of problems removing this because um, they're very hard to take out of this area and the new one is very hard to put back in there uh, if i would have gone the other route of replacing this um some people have say you have to go from the bottom of the car but i've seen that people have done it from the top and it's just very tight very uncomfortable and you have to remove like two bolts down here and another one around here and i didn't want to do that especially get under the car i'm too old for that so i decided to go the the more inexpensive way because this is can cost you over a hundred to two hundred dollars so i went the inexpensive way and i'm going to replace just this but that's going to be on my next video and the only other suggestion i can make is if you already have all this out it's the time to go ahead and take care of this because you have so little wiggle room here you might as well do it while everything is off the car if you don't have that option like i have now then just leave the intake manifold on it and just remove the throttle body from here um so that way you'll have some work some you know space to work with but other than that we'll see what happens i'm going to try to replace this and but that's going to be in my next video so keep an eye out all righty so we're getting somewhere now that i have the bushing the new bushing put into the uh, motor mount we're going to put the car back together so we're going to reverse the process we started over here 
on this side and we worked our way through all these cables and connectors and all the hoses to go to the throttle body and we went all the way and disconnected some little brackets that were attached to the intake manifold and then we came over here and we had to remove the solenoid um, to be able to pull out the intake manifold. Um, we went ahead and did all this, uh, all the spark plugs, coils. So now we're going to put the things in reverse. We're gonna start where we left off with the uh, solenoid and the fuel lines. We're gonna put the intake manifold. We're gonna reconnect everything back here. Don't forget to connect that pesty little rusty nut from the EGR valve, okay? And don't forget to put some anti-seize grease in there um, on the threaded part of the nut. The nut slid down. It doesn't come up because there's a lip right around the tubing. So just connect the EGR valve. Make sure that everything goes in there when you're putting the intake manifold. Make sure everything goes in there. Don't tighten it, just loosely tighten it and connect all these and then once you get to this area and you got the throttle body, you could go ahead and start tightening up stuff. I think you could do that one first before you, before you put the throttle body in there. Um, that way it'll be easier for you to get because that EGR is connected to the intake manifold. So go ahead and do that first. And once you get that in there and you tighten it loosely, go ahead and tighten the intake manifold then come back and tighten this then you put your throttle body back on and you put your hoses back on and all your clips and connectors um, everything that you took off connect your battery put back your go go back to your um, fuse box and re reinstall the uh, 15 amp fuse that you took out for the fuel pump and make sure that you got everything connected now you're going to have to go ahead and prime the fuel line because remember you had um, decompress the fuel line uh, don't forget to put the cap back on on that on that little tank there oh I'm out of breath I'm tired so then once you get it all connected everything is in place and you double check that everything everything is connected you're gonna have your pictures as your guide you're gonna go ahead and then turn the ignition on not all the way you're just gonna turn it on until you hear their fuel pump turn on inside the car then you could turn the car on you try on off on off a few times until it starts so that way you pressurize the fuel lines and there you have it so if i did it and i'm in my 60s you can do it too i saved me hundreds of dollars doing this myself i'm not going to say it was easy it took me a long time to get a lot of the parts that i ordered and that was just a frustrating part because what should have taken me a few hours it took me days and especially when you're dealing with a rusty EGR valve uh, tubing. Uh, the other problem that I had was replacing this and that took me over an hour and a half to cut the old bushing out. And um, watch my other video and I'll show you what I did to get this in here easily without a press. So um, I am not a mechanic. So whatever you use out of this informational video, you do so at your own risk. I have never done this before, so just be careful, but I'm not responsible for the steps that you use out of this video. Good luck and stay tuned for my other video.